Uh, the burst of interest nowadays is primarily related to the fact that among these category of objects uh, we observe very luminous phenomena with a typical uh, luminosity 100 times more or higher than average type 2N or co-collapse supernova. This slide shows you um, the theory of evolution, stellar evolution from the birth of the star to their death. Uh, stars are born with a Salpeter uh, mass distribution function. We know certainly that low mass stars and their life as white dwarf getting rid from hydrogen envelope and becoming for a short time my beautiful planetary nebula. Almost all of them quickly cool down and multiply the symmetry of cool white dwarf in our galaxy and somehow less, less than 1% of this object uh, uh, in binary system grows Chandrasekhar mass and explode as thermonuclear supernova or observationally supernova 1A. Uh, massive star, stars evolve to co-collapse, producing a huge family of uh, type 2 or 1B, 1C supernovae. Uh, here is misprint, <laughs> the <laughs> hero of my talk, type 2N <laughs> should be there. Uh, maybe it would be interesting for audience that the ratio of uh, thermally, thermonuclear supernovae to co-collapse is 1 to 7. S 7 is not the, the density ratio in radiation dominated <laughs> shock. <laughs> <laughs> huh? uh, it's uh, just uh, phenomenological oh, ratio. Yes. I, I just uh, trying to joke. <laughs> uh, supernova uh, type 2 and a highly diverse uh, category of objects, and uh, you may find uh, a lot of subtypes of the, this category as you want. In fact, uh, possibly we could uh, separate something like four or five main subtypes of the, this category of objects. Uh, the story begins uh, with the Schlegel paper who separated uh, among type two supernovae uh, small category of objects with these particular characteristics. Uh, all they ha had narrow emission line H alpha. Now we know that some of these guys have no hydrogen at all and in this situation they uh, show helium one uh, lines in their spectra. Anyway, narrow lines on top of broad components. Blue continuum, slow evolution, photometric, and weak or no absorptions. Fortunately, I, at that time, I was just looking at uh, similar objects. So it took uh, not so much time to understand that uh, these phenomena are related with the, possibly with the interaction <coughs> of, <coughs> of the supernova with the dense circumstellar environment. Indeed, uh, please look at these two uh, cartoons uh, which show type 2N, uh, archetypical supernova 88Z, and type 2P. Uh, they differ dramatically in the sense that uh, in type 2P at the photospheric epoch, you see uh, P-signi absorption 
P signal absorption components and the emission components, generally P signal profiles, which indicate that you have photosphere inside of extended envelope and atmosphere which scatters uh, radiation in lines, thus producing these uh, particular profi line profiles. You don't see something like that in type 2 ends. The quasi-continuum is composed by superposition of emission lines, mostly iron 2, this bump. S some iron 2 produces uh, emission in H-alpha region, uh, calcium and oxygen. You, uh, you see that uh, apart from broad lines, you uh, find very narrow, unresolved lines. And there is also some intermediate width component, uh, which I consider somewhat below. So uh, I published uh, in the same year a paper where I connected phenomenon of type 2 ends with the interaction of supernova with high density circumstellar environment. Good estimate of the density of the wind follows from the analysis of the light curve, bolometric light curve of one of the supernova type 2N, 87F. And it produced a huge number the dense, wind density parameter, which is the ratio of m dot to velocity of the wind, is about 10 to 17. If you multiply it by wind velocity, you should be able to produce m dot. But at that time, I didn't know the wind velocity of this kind of supernova. Uh, here uh, you compare, you may compare uh, the type 2N light curve and typical uh, behavior of type 2P, normal supernova type 2P at the late epoch. This is a radioactive tail, which correspond to mass of radioactive nickel of 87A in large Magellanic cloud with the ejector 8 solar mass and energy of 1, 10 to 51 ergs. Two orders of magnitude difference at the stage of one year. That's type 2N. Now we know uh, that majority of type 2Ns have, if you look at the H-alpha with a good resolution, you find on top uh, p signi line, which forms in the wind. And this line show that the typical wind velocity about 100 kilometers per second uh, for average uh, type 2 ends. Of course, there are some deviation in uh, higher uh, direction and lower, lower direction. With this velocity in hand, you may produce M dot, which is tremendous one hundredth of solar mass per year. We do not observe in our galaxy something like that. Maybe at a carinance at some stage, at the explosion stage, might be close to this mass loss rate. But nowadays, it loses uh, its mass with the rate 10 minus 3 solar mass per year. Uh, I want to demonstrate to you interesting independent view on the mass loss rate in type 2 ends uh, provided by X-ray data. This supernova 10JL has a light curve in I band which is 0.9 micron and V band 0.5 micron very much uh, similar to O6TF, which is type 2N, but uh, much uh, lower than ultra-luminous GY. But 
Anyway, it's, uh, it should be considered as rather bright type to N with the ma magnitude exceeding minus 20. What we saw in X-ray, by the way, Chandra, it's Poonam Chandra, lead author of this paper, but observations uh, really made by Chandra satellite. We see heavily absorbed. All right. So it's the same with Chandra data, and this is Chandra. Poonam Chandra, but Chandra data. <laughs> Uh, no, no. What, what, what are the data? Uh, these data are published uh, now, are under, under publication now in, in uh, APJ letters. We see heavily absorbed X ray source, which indicates the column density of. Hydrogen, 10 to 24. It's three orders of magnitude greater than typical galactic absorption for X ray source. Uh, just a minute. Moreover, the interesting feature of the spectrum is K alpha line of iron, which has a fluorescence nature and related with cool hydrogen or cool. Uh, or weakly ionized iron. Uh, more det if you look uh, at the K alpha in more detail, you find that the maximum of emission of K alpha a little bit redshifted compared to position 6.4, which should be in case if, there, if no scattering occurs. Uh, the effect is explained by recoil in, scatter, in, in multiple scattering. So the model, which is open square, reproduces the peak position of this. So the, uh, by and by, uh, the X-ray suggests that in this supernova we have Circumstellar material with large column density. Uh, the X ray luminosity is very huge, 10 to 42 in 0.2 10 keV band. And M dot, uh, we know wind velocity in this case by optical spectra. Yeah? Your KF9, uh, you have a red path which is you say by quantum. It's a Compton scattering. scattering, tail. You, you mean a red tail? Yes, but you saw this is due to the wind. Uh, ah, did I take it into account wind velocity? Uh, no, but it's Compton scattering in, in the wind. Compton scattering in the wind, yes. So from that, normally you can infer, infer uh, the order of magnitude of the wind, uh, wind speed. Uh, I from didn't. Your yes. Okay. Yes. You can, you can compute. Compute. Yes. Uh, that's the, 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 the column speed. density and the wind speed. Also. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. If sure. The sure. Uh, the the wind velocity is wind. is taken into account. Yeah. Here. Is it natural? Yeah. The, uh, there are two effects, uh, recoil uh, and uh, uh, Doppler uh, effect in the expanding envelope. Yeah, sure. And the, the wind velocity from this is consistent with the wind velocity expected? In, in, in fact, I, I, just, I just used uh, this as, as a parameter. Uh, and uh, I, I didn't try to, uh, to recover wi wind velocity from the X-ray data because uh, they're very noisy anyway. Yeah, it's model. It's just, yeah. You see, it, the error bar uh, <laughs> doesn't permit. Do not permit. So it's tremendous uh, mass loss rate. Um, but it's generally consistent with the conclusion 
uh, we made earlier from other event of type two ends. So it's more or less normal. About diversity of light curves. Among uh, type two ends, there are interesting objects already couple. First is 94W and recently another object was found, O9KN, which show the light curve characteristic of type 2P, in fact, some, something like plateau, drop of luminosity, and tail. In fact, it might be something like uh, the same phenomena, but uh, with more extended envelope and uh, with lower energy, possibly. Uh, our previous interpretation of 94W phenomenon with Sergei Blinikov was based on, on, on the model uh, which essentially was based on the spectral spectra which possibly in some case uh, deceived us because uh, one line showed us boxy line profile which indicated at that time velocity of 4,000 kilometers per second. But now I believe that we were wrong. Possibly we should exclude this line, but I, I haven't uh, any justification for that uh, even now. Because we uh, really in one case see boxy profile. But my impression is that uh, taking into account this supernova, which doesn't show this boxy profile, possibly exp real expansion velocity of this uh, uh, swept up shell is four times lower, about 1,000. So anyway, the interesting feature of this, uh, not only the uh, light curve at the plateau, but the tail, which is more or less similar to cobalt 56 decay rate in 09 KN, but much more steeper in 94W. Maybe this indicates that uh, the tail is not related with the radioactive decay at all. So uh, the interpretation of this uh, phenomenon uh, suggests that uh, we have uh, radiation trapping effect uh, similar to uh, type 2P supernova where in, in which case plateau is explained as diffusion part of the light curve. And we have also indication, clear indication that the phenomenon is related with collision with the circumstellar envelope which was not very much extended, but not also very much compact, about 10 to 15, which is about 150 times greater than typical envelope of type 2P supernova, uh, pre-supernova. Uh, another couple of light curves, it's, uh, 88Z, which I showed you, uh, spectra of which I showed you before, uh, archetypical type 2N. And supernova o, O8IY, which show an interesting uh, light curve behavior with a maximum about 400 days after the detection. This point, uh, uh, confident enough, uh, this is upper limit. Uh, in, in this case, we possibly mm, meet a case of collision with a distant uh, envelope with hollow, some hollow inside. By the way, the spectra of this uh, supernova is very much similar to the spectra of 88Z at the similar epoch, 500 days, uh, calcium and oxygen, H-alpha profile, iron two features, and H-beta, and so on. So uh, it's, uh, this case is 
very interesting to look at more, in more detail. And I use simple model of uh, thin, thin shell approximation, which predicts more or less correctly dynamics and give you also um, uh, data about shock wave velocity, the forward shock and reverse shock, which permit us to compute the luminosity of this uh, event. And we find that in this case, we can reproduce the light curve and velocity at late epoch, which is about three, four thousand kilometers per second, uh, for two or maybe multitude of possibilities. So there is some kind of phenomena of degeneracy of supernova parameters. You cannot fix ejector, supernova ejector parameters, uh, analyzing this kind of phenomena, but at least in, in the frame of my model. But what, what is uh, remarkable that the, you may predict uh, the amount and density circumstellar, circumstellar medium. In both cases, these values are similar. We should have something like three solar mass in the range of 210 to 16 centimeters. Uh, we see that in this case, the envelope is much more extended than in case uh, 94W, where we have 10 to 15 here, we have t uh, order of magnitude larger. And no, since we know the wind velocity, we know that this shell should be lost 70 years before the supernova explosion. The degeneracy of parameters of supernova may be understood uh, in a very simple fashion. Now, the interaction effect depends on the outer layers of ejector which collides with the circumstellar environment. But this uh, density distribution may be produced by different ways, uh, using higher mass, slower, uh, slower expansion, but higher density. And uh, low, lower mass, but, high, um, but relatively high energy, and which also produce s similar density in the outer layers. So this uh, degeneracy doesn't permit us to uh, recover confidently supernova parameters. Another case is especially interesting. Uh, the supernova ultra ultra-luminous supernova O3MA at Z.29 shows integrated radiated, uh, radiated energy 4, 10 to 51 ergs, which means that since efficiency of transforming of kinetic energy into radiation is lower than 0.5, you have an explosion energy at least order of 10 to 52 ergs, which indicates that among type 2 ends, or ultra-luminous events at least, we observe phenomena with huge uh, explosion energy, which, which can be produced by a standard co-collapse mechanism, which explains type 2p, for example. But it is more closer to hypernovae. So the analysis of uh, diversity of supernova light curves suggests that uh, the structure of circumstellar medium is different. The presupernova mass loss history is different. Uh, and presupernova explosion mechanism, presupernova model and explosion mechanism are possibly also differs from one case to another. So the type 2 ends is really a beast of very different objects with one common property. They, light, uh, they produce their light due to interaction of uh, supernova ejector with the dense circumstellar environment. M even more um, uncertain and difficult uh, issue is optical spectra. We, we had uh, recently a T 
break uh, a talk about interpretation of optical spectra of type 2 ends. It's open issue. Nobody yet have uh, reasonable models which is in position to reproduce any of this spectra. We have only a qualitative uh, interp in interpretation models. But anyway, spectra already give us a, an interesting look at the chemical composition of it, ejector and uh, circumstellar medium. We observe helium rich type 2 ends and hydrogen poor type 2 ends, uh, which indicate that uh, we observe different uh, huge mass loss at different stages of Bresnova evolution. And we also observe phenomena of colliding of type 1bc with hydrogen-rich circumstellar matter. It's, uh, we just uh, catch event at the right moment when, when it Presupnova get rid of hydrogen envelope and wolf ray star, uh, which, uh, which is uh, left, left behind inside, explodes and interacts with its own hydrogen envelope. It's an interesting phenomenon. Line emitting region, uh, we uh, already showed the spectrum and talked about intermediate component. And I should say that standards, uh, m standard model of interaction of supernova with smooth wind doesn't contain, uh, doesn't have, have, have no place for intermediate component. Indeed, in this situation, we observe two shocks, uh, forward shock and reverse forward shock propagating to circumstellar material and inverse shock propagating to the ejector. Uh, the ejector material flows into the reverse shock and uh, piles, piles up at the contact discontinuity. In, in most cases, uh, I should say in every case of type 2N, the density of um, circumstellar medium is high enough to guarantee that the reverse shock would be radiative. And so cool dense shell forms at the contact discontinuity. And we expect strong broad lines from this cool dense shell, uh, broad lines from supernova, unshocked supernova ejector, which is cool and irradiated by X-rays. And we expect narrow lines from excited circumstellar material. But we do not expect in this model intermediate component. Uh, we produced uh, with John Danziger uh, two models which might explain the existence of uh, intermediate width component as effect of shocked clouds, shocked dense uh, circumstellar clouds. You know that the intercloud shock runs faster than cloud shock. And, uh, it is cloud shock that might produce uh, intermediate component with lower width because shock wave in clouds is lower. And another possibility is dense equatorial wind, which could also produce low velocity shocks propagating in the equatorial region. Even more difficult issue are the broad, smooth wings. In fact, it's uh, in many cases when we hear words intermediate or narrow component on broad base, it's wrong. Uh, in many cases, you see uh, some kind of unique profile, smooth profile without uh, apparent components. We, I, <laughs> I named it uh, I, graceful broad wings. You, you don't see any, uh, any hint on some kind of two component structure. So what's the nature of this graceful profile? There are several possibilities to explain. I, I didn't met any more. Uh, multiple thorns and scattering on thermal electrons could produce you smooth broad wings. But this mechanism operates only at early epoch. I introduced it in one case 
98S and it works perfectly. It, it explains profiles at the, at the stage of about one, two weeks. But it's impossible to produce high optical depth to Thomson scattering in the circumstellar material or somewhere else for much more later stage. In this case, uh, uh, I'm sorry, in this case we observe profile at the stage 900 days, by the way. Uh, another possibility is that in the model of shocked clouds, we have the advanced stage of shocking when Kelvin Helmholtz instability produces uh, um, fragmentation of clouds and acceleration of fragments by forward shock flow. And this could produce, uh, if uh, these um, tiny fragments emits line, they will produce uh, nice broad wings. And third possibility is that there might be charge transfer between hot protons of the forward shock and cool materials of circumstellar clouds which in, inflows into the forward shock. But in order to explain the overall intensity of this line, we need to recycle uh, cool, cool hydrogen atom more than 1,000 times. So, uh, it's a, it's a kind of additional mechanism in, in addition to normal recombination or excitation of, of cool material. Uh, I produced some computation and found that uh, it's, uh, th this mechanism is unlikely because it produces a little bit weird profiles. So uh, the stripping, cloud stripping, to me, seems most likely possibility. And I just illustrate using a cartoon from paper of Hansen et al. Uh, we show you results of experiments in the shock tube where the um, aluminum, aluminum balls, tiny balls, tiny ball is, su is subject to shock wave, which propagates with a high velocity about 70 kilometers per second. And you see subsequent stages of this interaction, which shows you fragmentation of this uh, tiny ball or cloud in our terms, and acceleration of fragments. By the way, it's interesting. <laughs> to know that the shock tube has a size 2.3 millimeter uh, long in a diameter 0.8 millimeter. It, it consists of beryllium filled by some organic material which is subject to action of 10 laser beams. Uh, and this uh, uh, which uh, uh, the pulse has uh, duration one nanosecond. So experiment is nice. But it's, it's, it's of course uh, a big question. Is it really, uh, does it really reproduce the situation of supernova, of course. And a big question, of course, uh, pre-supernova mass loss mechanism. We don't know uh, about uh, this very much. We may just uh, uh, suggest that it might be dense wind, luminous of luminous blue variables like the Carina, red supergiants or yellow supergiants or hypergiants some, sometimes. Oh, I'm sorry. It may be also common envelope ejection when in binary system at the late uh, stage of evolution when the prime, 
primary becomes, or for example, a system which consists of two, uh, two normal stars, uh, one primary becomes red giant and uh, the secondary merges into, into it uh, and uh, produces a stage of common envelope uh, with ejection of uh, the, uh, the envelope, hydrogen envelope. But uh, this, m this uh, mechanism of uh, common envelope ejection should answer anyway why the common envelope stage uh, happens at the right moment when supernova should explode. And we see the answer at the next cartoons. Uh, and of course, a violent outburst of luminous blue variables like Eta Carina in the 19th century, it experienced a violent outburst which produced ejection of a huge amount of envelope. A summary of what I talked about is that the supernova light of type 2 ends comes from supernova uh, circumstellar collision with the, sometimes with a huge mass envelope, order of several solar mass, in, this in, in, in extension, with, with extension 10 to 15, several 10 to 16 centimeters. Diversity of light curves mostly related with the different mass loss history, Stru density and structure of circumstellar environment. Yet, uh, we know also that supernova type 2n differ by their energy, explosion energy, very much. And so three big questions remain. Uh, the optical spectra model, uh, the mechanism of heavy mass loss of pre-supernova, and of course, we don't know almost nothing about uh, explosion mechanism of supernova, and s some kind of some kind of excuse uh, I should say about that uh, supernova type two and GRB connection. Uh, three prerequisites already has been proposed, which may lead to such an association. Uh, we suggested with John Danziger that uh, the common envelope projection may be the reason for the huge mass loss, which should be in order to account type 2N phenomena. Barkov and Kamisarov explored in spiral of neutron star into the red supergiant and showed that the magnetar phenomenon uh, inside the red supergiant may produce phenomenon something like type 2 supernova. And Roger Chevalier uh, suggested smart idea that uh, the, if we believe that common envelope ejection is the cause for the high dense circumstellar material, then it's natural to associate the explosion of supernova with the common envelope phase. And he just asked if neutron star experience in spiral, why it cannot produce also explosion of supernova type 2N. And the explosion may be produced either through the uh, magnetar mechanism or through, through the formation of accretion disk around neutron star, uh, formation of black hole, like Roger Chevalier suggested earlier in uh, 96, I guess, yes. And in that case, like ordinary uh, machine scenario for GRB, could produce explosion and in such a way to associate 
type to an phenomenon and explosion of uh, machine scenario. So in, in this case, if uh, this might work, then why some GRB couldn't be associated with type 2 ends? Of course, uh, in this situation, we should say that in order relativistic jet to propagate through the star, it shouldn't be red supergiant. Otherwise, uh, the jet will, will be stopped. And it should be compact star, maybe Wolf Rayer, which just got rid recently from the red supergiant envelope. And again, this red supergiant envelope should possibly have favorable structure. So it might have equatorial disk structure and m more or less low density polar direction. And in this case, why not we see GRB? Maybe not so strong, but maybe some kind of uh, 98 BW. Uh, in fact, uh, Germany uh, associate already one type 2N with GRB, but this was short GRB, and unlikely <laughs> it was related with long, long GRB mechanism. And in this case, the properties of GRB are unknown uh, in other cases. So the existing data are inconclusive about this matter. So at this point I finish. Thanks.